please welcome Miss Anna McNuff. about running, about grabbing your trainers and just smashing out the door onto the nearest trail. Now, I thought I'd test out the theory of whether I was, in fact, a runner by entering a 100-kilometre race. <laughs> the result was I lost eight toenails, ate far too much malt loaf, vomited everywhere, and wound up in so much pain that the next day I wrote myself an email saying, never do anything that stupid <laughs> ever again. <laughs> then I read about these guys. This is the Tarahumara Indian tribe. They live in the Copper Canyon in Mexico, and they can run in 48 hours, 408 miles. I looked at their bodies, I looked at mine, and I thought, hang on, we're not that different, and so maybe if they're capable of running those kinds of distances, then perhaps I am too. And then I realised, actually, the only reason that I wasn't going to do a running journey was because I thought, God... What happens if I don't make it? What happens if I fail? And I thought, that has to be the most ridiculous reason not to start something. So I found a trail in a country that I really wanted to explore, New Zealand. And this is the Te Aroa Trail. It goes from the very tip of the South Island all the way to the north. It's 2,000 miles long, which is about the equivalent of 72 trail marathons. And because it's a trail, I can't have a buggy or a cart, so I'm going to have to run it with all of my equipment on my back. Bloody stupid idea. <laughs> so I did what adventurers do. Kay laid everything out in a nice little neat square, got a little bit of sharpness going, threw on a filter, posted it on Instagram. <laughs> and it came out at about seven and a half kilos. I thought, that's not too bad, seven and a half kilos. And I put a few more things in, and a few more. And it actually ended up looking like this. <laughs> and now halfway through the run, for some reason, one of the hosts that I was staying with, they really didn't believe me in the weight of my backpack. So when I went for a shower, they snuck into my room and they stole it. Oh, I felt full on violated. And they came, I came down the stairs and they told me what I thought was in fact seven and a half kilos was 14 kilos. And that meant with seven days worth of food in my bag, it had been up at 20 kilos but I didn't want to know. It really didn't help me progress on the run. So the moral of the story is, if you freak yourself out like me, just tell yourself lies and all be okay. <laughs> now, the TRO trail, it is no pussycat. And uh, funnily enough, my training runs from Leafy Hampton to Hammersmith along the treacherous River Thames towpath <laughs> hadn't quite prepared me for what was to come. And I quickly realised that the running was actually going to be the really, really easy part. But bloody hell, it was beautiful. There were just these alpine passes and these turquoise lakes, forests, swamps, beaches where I would run for 40 kilometres barefoot in one go. And when I got into towns, I actually stopped and I asked this man to pass me a piece of paper. And I went into schools and I spoke to school children. And every time I stopped, that they would actually write me letters back. And here's what I got. Anna McNuff is tall and proud and trying to raise money for kids. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. She has a goal to run from the bottom of New Zealand to the very top. She is very, very fit and strong, like a boy has abs. <laughs> yeah. Anna McNuff is as brave as a half-fire-breathing wolf, half-terrifying dragon. She runs as fast as a Lamborghini. Not true. She would be as tired as a sleepy bear. That is true. She has blue eyes, blonde hair, and it is short, like my eyelashes. <laughs> now, of course, there were the dark times, like in this valley, where I hadn't seen anyone in days, and I was forced with crossing a river up to 30 times. Now, I'm from London. In London, we build bridges over rivers, right? New Zealand, they just plough the trail straight through a raging torrent. And I would get really, really frightened by river crossings, and on one particular crossing... I came out and I stepped on this rock and my ankle gave way with this really loud crack. I hit the deck and I thought it was broken. I thought, that's it, it's game over. And it took me four hours to hobble to a spot where I was flat enough to pitch my tent. And I crawled in and looked at my ballooning mess of an ankle 
And I just cried my eyes out. I thought, I am frightened, I'm lonely, I feel isolated. All of these things that I thought could possibly go wrong at the start of the journey, they had. And I was just right down at rock bottom. But then I remembered that I'd packed myself a secret weapon because I thought in 72 trail marathons, I was probably going to have a dark day. I was probably going to have times where I thought I wouldn't want to get out of my tent and run. And so I'd packed myself these. <laughs> is a unicorn having a fight with a robot under a rainbow. <laughs> These pants, they remind me that we are the lucky ones. We are born into the developed world, and we have the freedom and opportunity to explore it, and we do it by choice. So I call these my pants of perspective. <laughs> yeah. So I put on my pants of perspective, which rather handily actually matched the ankle strapping, which complemented the rainbow quite nicely that I had in my bag. And I pushed on for four days through the bush to the next town. And by the end of it, I'd run 1,911 miles. I'd done the equivalent of 72 trail marathons. And I'd run with a backpack that averaged about 14 kilos, not seven and a half. And I'd stopped to speak to 4,000 Kiwi kids along the way. There are so many things in life that could be potentially great that we just don't start because we're filled with all this fear of what might happen if we fail. And life is to be grabbed by the balls at every single opportunity. So I think when those fears rear their ugly head, just get yourself a pair of magic pants <laughs> and get things in perspective. Thank you. <laughs>